Welcome back, everyone, to the Cube's live coverage. Day three, we're winding down Boomi World. We're getting all the action here. All the big conversations are happening. I'm John Furrier, your host of the Cube. We have two great guests here. Dan's back from Boomi. Good to see you. Thank Just you. Coming back. Appreciate it. Yeah. Sean from Cognizant. Thank the you. The partnership. One of the big stories, guys, is uh, first of all, thanks for coming on. Is the is the is the partner ecosystem? Mm. You know, when uh, you know, I've seen the movie before. Certainly in the cloud 1.0 wave, when Amazon emerged as the cloud ecosystem was critical to their growth because they had a great product. Sure. They had compute, storage, queuing, all nice little building blocks, they called them. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is history. And we now see what's happened. Similar movie going on right now yes. here at Boomi World where you got a lot of partner opportunities. There's huge white spaces of opportunity. There's tons of customer demand, um, a lot of going on. So, how's the relationship going? To explain the relationship between Cognizant and Boomi and what are the opportunities you're working? Sure. Do you mind if I jump in first, Prashant? Please go ahead. Yeah, sure. So listen, uh, it, with, with across the, the marketplace and, and where we're at in Boomi is we see you know, massive opportunity to not only help you know, our customers with application sprawl that has developed over the past several years based on all of the incremental demands that they've put on them by the market, the customers, their employees, et cetera. And Boomi has been very, very busy trying to help organizations integrate and automate all of those solutions across their enterprise. Very hard to do, certainly we can't do it ourselves, and we have uh, invested our time in creating a horizontal platform for customers to be able to take advantage of. Where we clearly fall short of that is bespoke knowledge of the line of business expertise, the business process know-how, and the vertical expertise, and of course the global reach that we need to ultimately reach all of those customers and help their dreams come true. And that's where we've partnered with an amazing organization, Cognizant, for the past several years has been one of our top partners, uh, top partner in EMEA and other locations across the world uh, several times over. And, uh, and they have helped us take this to the next level and add so much more value to, uh, to what we can bring to the market. So I'd, I'd love to have Prashant comment on that as well. Hopefully similarly excited about the partnership. Yeah, thank you. Uh, very excited, uh, awesome event so far. Uh, one of the things that I see between Boomi and Cognizant, right, is kind of getting the best of two different words to the customers, right? You mentioned about way one, the, the movie is repeating again. And uh, our theme uh, this year was cognitive dissonance. Uh, let me explain what that means uh, in the context of enterprises. <laughs> They have to leverage their people process technology assets to maximize their outputs, mm -hmm. right? But more often than not, they find themselves in so-called dissonance. The, the dissonance, why it happens? It happens because decisions at different times in, points in time, and then di uh, di uh, different people taking care of different stops, then organizational alignment, various technologies. Now, it's not anybody who is doing a mistake. It's just that things are out of tune, out of sync. Now, question is why that is out of sync, right? For example, it's localization versus centralization, right? Fragmentation. Then we talk about cloud versus on-prem. Then we talk about accessibility versus data security. All of this bring varying conflicts within the organization to create that dissonance. Yeah. Now, Boomi and Cognizant together understand those dissonances, which cut across, yeah. not just the processes, not the data, but the people, yeah. and bring that all together and give them an ecosystem where they can operate seamlessly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Dan, this is a great point. The cognitive dissonance component is interesting because look, we're in a whole new systems mindset mm -hmm. with cloud. If you look at cloud, I mean, look at what you guys are doing. This is distributed computing. Sure. We've seen, we know what it, what it is. Sure. It's just changing so fast. Yeah. And the question is, I mean, I can see if I'm a customer like, hmm, did I make the right choice? Right. Who developed that code? What's the right. software supply chain? That's right. What's the data? Who's got the, is it, yeah. whoa, don't bring the AI in here. I don't That's want any right. hallucinations. That's right. I mean, the fear. Yeah. Uncertainty and doubt that's yeah. out there yeah. is massive, yet yeah. the opportunity is too big to ignore. Yes. Yeah. I, I completely yeah. agree. I, I think what's what's amazing is we've seen we've seen all of these things before. As you said, we've seen this movie before. We've seen, you know, political change, we've seen economic change, we've seen technology change, yeah. just never at the pace that we're seeing them together now, right? Even workforce movement from yeah. you know the the massive push to cloud because we're all remote workers. Well, wait, now we want everyone back in the office again, and how does that impact our lives? So, so all of these different experiences that we've had, we've seen over the last three decades, maybe the first three decades in my career, but in these last three years, we've seen all of that at once. And so the, the pace is just quickening and quickening and quickening, and we have to help organizations react to that and be agile. And so what, what adds even a little bit more pressure to that is the consequences of not keeping up are greater than they ever have right. been before. Yeah. So if you're not prepared the way, for what's they can coming, be quantified in. too. By the way, the consequences of of the of not keeping up 
you can actually measure that now. Sure. Losing market share. That's right. Lost sales. That's right. Lost employee uh, yeah. retention. I mean, a lot of metrics now yeah. point to this and say, whoa, 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 whoa. If we don't get at, if we don't get in on this wave, right, and if we miss it too early, you're driftwood. That's if right. If you miss the wave, you miss the wave. That's right. So you, you got to time it perfectly. So I can see this dissonance being an issue. Yes, and and if you see uh, what Dan said, that is a short term pressure to perform, and then then the long term requirement to have a sustainable growth. How do you then put a fabric in place to have both, right? And then there is individuality versus the organizational alignment. You can ask a certain business unit to go and do something mm -hmm. because they need autonomy and agility, but at the same time, they have to operate in an organizational context yeah. so that they all talk in sync. Yeah, and that's why I like the API announcement. You guys announced, Boomi announced the two sure. M&A deals, API management, which you guys had some of that. You shored that up and yeah. brought in some real talent, uh, certainly in some good technology. I know the mastery guys uh, from the, the day one, they good tech. I don't think they kind of got the market share they kind of could have gotten. Sure. Had they had been funded or, or nurtured differently, not to put a diss on Intel or the PE companies, but, <laughs> but they have good tech. Yeah, um, yeah. One of the things we are seeing now, customers, right, uh, they are coming to partners like Boomi and Cognizant. I will give you right now in the last 24 hours, three examples where they said, hey, am I doing this right? Boomi is coming up with this great platform, what they call as um, uh, Boomi Enterprise Platform. There are so many features that we thought we want to have, now they are offering. How do I start? How do I build the foundation? And yeah. what do I need to take care in terms of guardrails and guidelines? Mm -hmm. And that's where the conversation is come yeah. going up from that API to point-to-point -point connection right. to a much broader business enablement. And so you're yeah. saying that you can, you're having conversations with Boomi, they get, they're bringing something to the table that you don't have to build. Bit. That was the key message of the CEO. Correct. You can focus on your deal, yes. which, yes, which right. is your business. Yes, that's right. And, and then work with Boomi to transform. And it, the partnership right. work both ways in feeding back what we see from industries that he mentioned back to Boomi. Yeah. Dan, I want to ask you a question because Steve teased this out and I, I asked him when he was here in the queue of an hour ago. He kind of answered the question, but I, I think he could have answered it a little bit deeper. Maybe he didn't want to reveal <laughs> it. But on stage, he's talking a lot of code words. Um, low code lang chain. Sure. I heard that, I'm like, whoa. Yeah. That's a dog whistle to me. I'm like, okay, okay. I know Langchain, that's the rag, that's sure. all that stuff going sure. on. Okay, that's built into the platform. Right. That's a feature, not a company. Okay, no, no offense to, to those guys at Langchain. He also mentioned um, orchestrating mm -hmm. agents and sure. CRMs. Right. Uh, you mentioned line of business. Okay, so you right. know where I'm going with this. Sure. Okay, IT modernization, right. iPads, whatever you want to call that standard category, APIs, it's called the internet, it's called yeah. enterprise architecture. Yeah. Now you're talking about line of business. That's a different animal. Yeah. That's different go to market, yeah. different customer. Yeah. different technology. That's right. Is this where the partnership flowers for you guys, where you guys handle a lot of the line of business? Because if that agent garden kicks in, sure, that's going to be an ecosystem sure. eating frenzy yeah. yes. for well, customers to just yeah. click, click, click. So if I could jump in on that, I think, I think there's a reason why Steve was maybe not so deep on it, because each one of those is probably a very deep discussion, right? But to go back to what Prashant was offering about this cognitive dissonance, it's really about the customer's journey. Right, and so you don't take a, 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 a legacy architecture or a non-modernized architecture, or unintegrated architecture. And by the way, we find most organizations have roughly a thousand applications, cloud applications only, not even the on-prem stuff. We've heard Steve talk about this. Yeah. Only about thirty percent of those are integrated. So it is going to be a journey to get them to you know homeostasis of where all of that is to be ready for AI and then add all of the new things that you just talked about, APIs and API management, let alone they'll still have multiple different tools out there. And so there's a few unique things that, you know, Prashant and Cognizant are amazing at. One is they understand the customer's need. They understand the outcome they want to do, but they understand the journey yeah. and when to make those switches without disrupting the business and how to help them do that yeah. in a harmonious way. So that's why we partner, yeah. you know, with, with the companies like Cognizant because they can help customers through that journey yeah. to get to where they want to go in a reasonable amount of time without flipping a light switch, because it's impossible to do that, right? You cannot yeah. do things overnight, yeah. and things change as you go, yeah. and so they help them with this, this migration path. I mean, it's go. interesting you bring that up, and I'd like to get some examples, but I would just make a comment first, and maybe you can weigh in on the reaction. Integrations, I won't say it's easy. It's, it, you, you integrate, <laughs> you can integrate stuff, right. then you integrate critical workloads, right. and then you integrate at scale. Okay, those are hard things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can see where you're going with that. So the question I have is, can you give an example of how you guys are working together, uh, a use case, customer example, that illustrates your point around 
integrating good big workloads mm -hmm. at scale yeah. is hard. Sure. And by the way, sure. it create new value, not just create the existing yeah. value. Right. Yeah, so uh, you are right. Uh, when you look at, uh, let me take an example of a healthcare customer. You are a member, I'm a member, he's a member. What's the pain you feel? Because from all the way from your premium, the open enrollment, till any op care after the post-operative care or anything, there is so much of member engagement that happens, mm -hmm. right? And as you said, in a healthcare system, it's more than 2,000 systems that need to feed to that member experience. And there is data, that's a longitudinal data, there is information, there is uh, radiology image readings, so much of data has to come in to give you, as a member, a better experience. Yeah, yeah. Now, to do that, you have to go through different sets of data. There are SaaS platforms, there are on-prem systems, there are, there are at least two, three clouds, right? Yeah. And then, not to top it all, there are various outside stakeholders that come into yeah. play. Now, Boomi and Cognizant, right? We are working with the healthcare provider to give that seamless experience at any stage in your journey with that partner. Right. right. That, see, healthcare, because of the exchange and other things, yeah. their biggest thing is member retention. Yeah. How do you do that? As a consumer, yeah. you feel attached to a brand. Can you bring that brand familiarity, brand connection through this platform? That's right. right? So that's one. And second is, Boomi provides all this ecosystem. Right. Yes. 80% of the customers don't know how to leverage it yeah. across different things. Right. There's API, there's MDM. There is this agent garden you spoke about. Yeah. Things can be seamless yeah. if you bring that all together, view that all together. And it requires, to your point, it's complex, the buyer personas are different. Yeah, yeah. and you need teamwork, right? Silos kill. We all know silos are the yeah. death of innovation. Yeah. 100%. Um, but so you start getting into a team sport, okay? This is where I see agents playing a big role because yeah. they can do the, they use the word minions on stage, <laughs> they can do a lot of the work that causes usually personality crisis. For sure, where is that uh, invoice? Right. Uh, no, it's your fault. So we had one customer actually saying they automated the process away and everyone's happier. That's right. So you That's mentioned right. silo skill, but let me expand on that a little bit. Sure, please sure. do. Maybe Boomi have found a solution to it because the decentralization allows agility and autonomy in an organization to That's quickly right. spin out businesses, quickly right. respond to the changing events in the market, quickly respond to the customers. Now, with that platform, you don't need to worry about, oh, where is that legacy system? Yeah. You get yeah. the information already. You don't have a three-month cycle. Boomi is helping that. Thing. Yeah. So you could literally, I wouldn't use the word silo, you could literally have an autonomous group working on a great idea yeah. Yeah. with the platform enablement. Yeah, I mean, this is classic to decouple and be highly exactly. cohesive. That's the that's operating yeah. principle of all good software design yeah. is to have these systems work together. Yeah, you defragment through seamless integration. That's right. It's a feature, not a bug. And that's no. why I think the API sprawl messaging, I, I told Steve this in the team, it's a feature. You want more sprawl. More API right. means more connections, sure. more, and more growth. But sprawl it's out of but, control. But think about it from the user perspective. So the silo, the sprawl, all of these things together and, and the data integration, I, we get very complex in how we think about it. I always think about it from the end user perspective. So when I, I just I just recently moved and I had to transfer my you know services from one location to the other, be that my utilities, my gas, my electric, and I had various different experiences throughout. One great experience was, hey, I'm, I'm moving down the road, it's only a few miles away, can you end my service here and end it there, talk to one person, they did it, and it worked in the app as well as it did on the phone, seamless. Some of the other services, not so good. I had to call one person, they disconnected me, they transferred me to somebody else, I had to re-explain my entire situation all over again and, and re-initiate that process. And what that tells me is the data's not connected, Yeah. right? One system is not here, one system is not there, we have to have a human you know, in between those interactions, re-enter my passwords, re you know, re-authenticate who I am, et cetera. Maybe even go down to see them, which I had to do for one utility, uh, which was, you know, foreign. Why couldn't I just do it in the app? Send the facts. It? That's the worst. Or on well, web. Send the facts. Et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that exists. That exists out in the market, right? And yeah. we need the reach. We need the breadth. That's why we need to make it happen, because customers will leave yeah. you if they have a bad experience. It's never been easier to do that before as an end user. Well, that's what you mentioned, MDM. I think, yeah. you know, the word, you guys use the word trusted data management. Yeah. That's a key word is what? trust, because you don't want to have bad data, but on the hallucination side, on the AI, and you got to get the governance right. Yeah. Absolutely. Be, to be horizontally scaled, which you're basically are saying that Boomi's doing, and be vertically specialized with the data in the app, you yeah. got to have different data diversity aspects of it. Right. You got to be 
frictionless. Yes. That means the government's got to be built in before it flies. Yeah. It's like, yeah. It's like yeah. a plane. Right? It's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> make sure yeah. they're checklist. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. 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 And, and um, one other thing with that acquisition, API, um, API data, right? API data and yeah. 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 So, Boomi has solved one other bigger problem, which is looking at the customers want choices. They would always have more than one platform. They would always have you know, probably sprawls. How do you still allow them to exploit that advantage? The the single pane helps customers to have that flexibility and leverage. And that's yeah. what, you know, we've been working with Boomi to bring that to the customer. Sure. And they already just that need in the customer landscape. Yeah. Right? Now, with a mastery, that's on the API side, API management. So if you see, the, the, the white spaces have been filled. Now, it's ready to go. Yeah, and that's a great advantage because you have reliability and confidence yeah. in the enterprise when APIs are managing essentially all the connective tissue. That's right. That's going to be flowing through it. I mean, eighty percent of eighty-five percent of tra all internet traffic is API based. That's, that's right. Mean, that's right. That I mean, understand if you factor in the enterprise. Yeah. So huge. Deal. Yeah. Yeah. Every one of those, by the way, every API that's out there and exposed to the world is a potential for a breach. Yeah. Right, yeah. and that that risk of failure is actually magnified the more we go. And so again, that's why we need somebody to who can have oversight at all of it, help customers along that journey, manage it through a single pane of glass, and reduce the risk for our clients to ultimately get where they want to go. Well, Dan, you you must have a very busy job. The alliance and the ecosystems <laughs> sure. are probably just now. You can feel the thundering st stampede coming your way. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of growth. You guys are a great example, working together. Yeah. Uh, we saw some other partners. Stripe was on here with, with mm -hmm. you guys. Just love the the, the 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 relationship decoupled, but the synergies between them sure. is classic optimization theory. Sure. So uh, well, thoughts on where this goes next for you guys? Do more customer gigs? Do yeah. More? yeah, do you mind if I jump in first? I, I, because I think they'll be a good lead-in for where you'll take it. I, I think first of all, as part of my role, I manage our uh, systems integrator partnerships as well as our many of our technology partnerships and even those that embed Boomi within their own products that take to market. So Stripe falls in one, we have Cognizant and others. And, and what's amazing about this job is I really get to have a full spectrum yeah. of what the customer ultimately sees. And, and we can do that at a certain level to make our products work together, but to the business know how to actually bring that to life for our customers. Cognizant is actually in an equally challenging role where they have to make sense of all the things that we're doing and bring that to life. So often we get a lot of recommendations on who we should be working with yeah. based on you know, what Cognizant tells us you know, that the customers need to achieve. So I'd love you to kind of maybe give an example. A team sport. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a team sport and uh, Cognizant has always been at the intersection of business and technology helping customers to think about yeah. business first and then what's the best way to execute on it, yeah. right? And that's where Boomi comes in. Now, the next thing is, what well, you asked, right, what is next for you, is to take that to the next level, especially with so much going on, the speed of innovation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we have to keep up to that pace with the customers, with the Gen AI, which is another big gorilla in the yeah. environment. We are working closely with Boomi to make that Im impact to the customers. The cycle time that customers usually had, which is three to nine months, is getting much shorter. Yeah. They want outcomes. They want to see this. They want to feel it. That's, uh, what? Right? So that's where we're taking the relationship. That's where we're on the ground side, yeah. we're working closely, any customers ideating before we go in front of the customers. Yeah, Prashad, you nailed it. Acceleration yes. needs trusted advisors. Yes. People that can build the bridge to the future with and then cross it. Yeah, that right. is a special relationship now more than ever because, again, the consequences. That's right. You actually can point to things now and quantify it. That's right. Say, that's Whoa. right. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's that's exactly why we lean on Cognizant because yeah. they have that ear of the customer. They're not just coming in as a technology you know hammer to come in and yeah. solve some problem that we yeah. see. It's actually listening, understanding, understanding the scope, the timeline, et cetera, to ultimately get to that yeah. cognitive dissonance of a harmony, you yeah. know, the, the band yeah, playing harmony, together. Uh, yeah. Congratulations on a great developing ecosystem you guys got. Thank Obviously, you. the evidence is clear. There's momentum. Yes. Uh, Very and exciting. Yeah. And based on the, the market we're in now and from a tech business model standpoint, looking all good, yeah. all thank green you. light. Congratulations. Appreciate you. that. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. you on the Cube. Thanks for coming thank on. You. Thank awesome. Thanks appreciate appreciate for the time. I appreciate okay, it. We'll be yeah, right back you. with more Cube coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host. Stay with us. We'll be back up. We're wrapping up day three, coming to a close soon, but we'll be right back after this short break.